so I want to come back to how the, why the world's influential people might be the psychologically least likely to be able to be convinced based on what it took to become influential. Mm -hmm. I'll come back to that in a moment. Because you started, you said, maybe we only have to influence 3%, but a moment before you said, if we're practicing self-restraint and anyone defects, and they don't restrain, so they do the more short-term power thing, then they win, and then they create a world that orients to that thing. So defection, mm. sociopathic narcissistic defection is pretty key to this thing. It is. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts, reflections on <clears throat> any of this, but also specifically, how do we... What are the criteria that... What is the evolutionary niche for the sociopathic narcissistic property to be selected for and how would we close that niche mm -hmm. to uh, because promoting wisdom where it will always lose game theoretically is not that interesting mm -hmm. so there's something about the relationship of wisdom and power and I would even say wisdom has to bind there it's it's a master emissary thing and I know this is very uncomfortable as it should be mm -hmm. but if the master doesn't bind the emissary then everything's broken and so that which is power-seeking has to actually be bound, which requires power, by something that is not power-seeking in the same way. Yeah. Which is why Taoism says the one who wants to lead, everybody should run away from. The one who doesn't want to lead and everyone pushes into leadership, maybe you can listen to. Yeah. So curious to hear your thoughts on wisdom binding power, closing the evolutionary niche on power-seeking, those types of things. Um. So much. Yeah, so the, uh, I mean, I think the, I agree with, um, first of all, what you did was brilliant and I really appreciate it. Like Ian, I'm in very significant agreement with it. Um, uh, John Keeks made a distinction between goals and ideals and the word purpose equivocates between them. A goal is an end state that everything else is in the service to and it's the utilitarian where an ideal is not. An ideal is something that is a part of the grammar by which you interpret and make sense of yourself in your life. And um, I agree. And we even did that with the sacred. We took sort of transcendent, imminent, and then we made this world, this is the Nietzschean critique, we only had a utilitarian value for the, that, that world. And then when we stopped believing in the upper world, this world seems to have no value. Uh, that whole framework, uh, I think, has to be rejected, which is not a rejection of the sacred. I just want to make that very, very clear. And so why I'm, 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 I'm um, sort of on that is because I think that this is part of the answer. You can break game theoretic circumstances in which right, you get people to remember certain things. Uh, so you can get some very core ones, uh, like you, you go in a situation where you take $20. Oh, sure. Now the situation, well, you take $20, but I, here's two people, but I've got to give that person 40 So there's 60 and they get 40 and you get 20 Will you take it? And if you don't take it, nobody gets it. No, I won't take it. So people, there's a symbolic thing that they're oriented towards. And it's something like they, they, want, to, they want to belong to a world that is a just world. And that is more important to them than their own individual immediate gain. That's the first thing. So there's a symbolic aspect. And Robert Nozick made a good point about this, that we, we didn't put that into a lot of, and, and for good reasons, we didn't put it into a lot of the game theoretic modeling because it messes up all that modeling um, in a lot of ways. And then that connects to, we don't actually supervalue, and this is the sociopath, right? We will, we will, we will significantly undermine subjective well-being if we have a reasonable belief that we will get enhanced meaning in life. This is part of our evolutionary heritage as mammals. We're also primates. We're also sociocultural. And the, the prototypical instance we do this is have a kid. When you have a kid, all of the measures of su subjective well-being go down. Your health goes down, your sleeping goes down, your finances go down, your social connections go down, the amount of sleep you're getting is going down, you're sick all the time, your partner doesn't like you anymore. And you're in a constant stress situation. And you ask people, well, why are you doing this? Like, it, like, you couldn't pay most people. Well, why are you doing this? Well, because it's making my life more meaningful. Because they're connected to something, again, that has a reality beyond themselves and a, 
right? I'll, I'll use your term, a value beyond themselves. He used another term, interestingly, which was sacrifice, yes, which has related etymology to sacred. Of course. And something you can't say that you know something is sacred if you aren't willing to sacrifice for it. So please continue. As and, 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 this is, and this is another thing to remember, that the arrow of relevance for us does not point to just how are things relevant to me. Mm. Yes, it, it, we do have to feel connected to ourselves, because if we don't, we're, we're dissociated, our agency is undermined. But as Ian said, we have to feel fundamental, not how, am, how are you relevant to me, but how am I relevant to you? How am I relevant to us? And how are we relevant to the world? And yes, how is, are we and the world relevant to something that grounds that world? What Plato would call the good, right? And, and so I think that if we can get people to remember, this is what I would want to say. I don't, I, I don't even like the word remember. I want people to be able to fall in love with all of these dimensions of being again. Because, and this is one of the, this was Spinoza's big insight, right? The way you overcome a powerful motivation is with another powerful motivation. Is we can get people to fall in love again with being, within, between, and beyond, we can, we can, we can break the game theoretic. This is what Christianity did in the Roman Empire. Christianity went out and it didn't, unlike Stoicism, that tried, I'm not saying we shouldn't try and get the government, but that tried, right, and it had some success too, but Christianity went and said, there's a new way for you to love yourself. You are not the non-person the Roman Empire says you are. Here is a new way. Agape is a way in which you can love yourself, and it's not a hedonistic, egocentric power love. Here's how we can love each other, and here's how we can love God. And it captured the world, and it captured a world that was part, one of the epitomes of a world driven by power, competition, the lust for glory. So we have histor historical examples of if you give people if you can get them out of meaning starvation, so they're not in a scarcity mentality. When you're in a scarcity mentality, you drop into left hemispheric. I think Ian's right about that. You're short-term, utilitarian, right? What do I need? What, right? Because this is emergency mode. But if you can get people out of a scarcity mentality and get them to fall in love with being again, connecting this to themselves and, and others, then you can get, you can call them to something that gets them to remember that they actually do value, I'm trying to use your language, right? Connectedness more than success. Mm 